Hi, my name is Sabrina Ellen Savard, and today I'm going to show you how to use high intensity strength training methods in your body sculpting classes to maximize their effectiveness. This is the equipment we're going to use today. We're going to use an adjustable Reebok step. It also has extra platforms, which we'll be using at different portions throughout the workout. These are some dumbbells. This is a set of four pound dumbbells, a set of 10 pound dumbbells. These are Dyna bands a medium and a heavy resistance. This is a 12 pound body bar and we also have some challenge tubing here. We have an extra heavy, a heavy and a medium tube. In the front, these are push-up grips. I use these myself and if anybody has any wrist problems you might want to recommend that they get something like this so your wrists don't bend back doing any push-ups or any of that sort of thing in class. This is all very inexpensive transportable equipment that if you do in-home personal training you could also get these things and after you view the video today you'll know how to use this equipment to do your in-home personal training and get the best results for your clients. We're first going to start off with a very basic warm-up. We're going to march it out on the inside leg. Okay, you want to keep your warm-ups really basic and not dancey because it gives the wrong image for doing strength training work. Okay, we're going to walk it up nice and easy. Up, nice bicep curl, warming up the biceps. Two more times, up. One more time. Now we're going to step touch. Four, three, nice lateral raise, warm up the shoulders. Nice easy grapevine, no arms. Two more. Just step out to the side. Now walk up, other foot. We're here on beautiful Rye Beach today in New Hampshire. I wish I could just live here forever. Step touch. Just nice and easy. Four more. Now grapevine, three times. Two. Step out to the side and walk it up. You're on your right lead. Again. Two more times. One more time. Okay, nice easy step touch. Four. Three, we're going to add some arms with the grapevine this time. Star arms. Take it up and down, up and down. Step out to the side. Walk up. Two more. One more time. Step touch. Four and three. Two. Now grapevine, star arms, up and down, up, down, up, step out, and walk it up. We're going to break this down a little bit and add on and warm up a few more muscle groups. Now step touch, four, three, two, grapevine, just once, step out, walk it up. I wish my classes were outside like this. Step touch. Four, three, two, nice easy grapevine. Step out, walk up. One more. Step touch. Four, three, two, grapevine. We're going to add on. Step out. Now step forward. Touch, in, touch, in, touch, in, touch. Now step out to the side. Out and in. Out and in. Two more. Out, in. Now let's walk it up again from the top. You're on your left foot right now. Left foot leading. Step touch. Four, three, two. Nice easy grapevine. Start it out. Step out. Now make this a lunge. Forward lunge. Make sure that knee is right in line with your ankle. Back is straight. Let's squat. Four and three. 
Who put that there? Two. And let's walk it up. I'm allowed to make jokes in this, right? Make it a little easier. For me, anyway. Step touch. Four, three, two, grapevine. Step out. Now forward lunge. Take it out, upright row. Out and up, out, up. Now squat to the side. Hands on your thighs, lower back support. Let's walk it up. Step touch. Four, three, two, grapevine. Step out and forward lunge. Upright row. Squat to the side. And up. And up. And let's take it from the top. Walk it up. Again. Step touch. Four, three, two, grapevine. Step out, forward lunge. Out and up. Front raise, upright row. Squat to the side. Out, in, out, in, out, in. Now step out and pull back. Back, back, warming up the back muscles. Reach, pull. Side lunge. For four, three, two, now four here. Press it back, triceps and switch. Pull up, up, triceps, press. Row it up, up. Now let's do this at half time. Back, in, back, add the arms. Back, pull in, back. Three more, two, one. We're gonna hold it back this time and lift it up. Push up, pull, big circle up, pull down. Circle, pull. Warming up those shoulders a little bit more and the calves. Now bend the knee and tuck your butt. Tuck and back, tuck and back. Four more, three, two, and hold. Tuck your butt right under, press down. This is for your hip flexor. Four more, three, two, and one. Now bring this back leg in, bend your knee, and toe up, sit right down into it. It's for your hamstring and also stretches out your soleus. Okay, bring me one hand out. Have that thigh right in line with your other thigh. This is for your quadriceps. Give me four more. Three, two, and one. Okay, drop it back. Lift that toe up. The knee stays right back here over the ankle. This is for your inner thigh. Four, three, two. Now turn it right to the front. Pull your tummy in, round your back over. You're gonna drop it down, two, up, two. Down, two, up, two. Couple more, down, two, up. Now let's do it in four. Take it, four, three, two. Now up for four. Four, three, two, whole way up. Shoulders back, two, three, step it in. March it out, and let's walk it up. You're gonna stretch out the other side. Step touch. Four, three, two, nice easy grapevine. Step it out. Forward lunge. Up, upright row. Again. Now squat to the side. Squat and in. Squat and in. Now give me that step out and a pull back. Pull back. Reach and pull. Four, three, two, now lunge and punch. Side to side. Sweep that arm. Four, three, two, four each side. Let's do triceps and switch. Chest. Chest again. One more time. Now remember that half time move? Take it back, in, back, and in. Add some arms. Up and pull. Up, pull. Four more. Three, 
two. Let's hold it back. We're going to push up. Push up. Big circle up. And up. And up. Four more. Three. Pressing right down into the calf. Now bend the knee and tuck the butt. Tuck and back. Tuck and back. Let's pull up and down. Up and down. Four more. Three. Two. And hold. Let's take those arms right down around the back. Press down. Stretching out your shoulders, your chest, and your hip flexor right here. What a great day. Four, three, two. Bring that back leg in. Bend your knee. Sit right down into it. Hamstring and soleus. You always want to keep your abdominals in and tight also. Okay, let's extend the arm. Grab that ankle. Good thing that was there. Okay, four more. Three, two, and drop the leg back. Toe up. Spare your inner thighs once again. Make sure you're keeping this knee basically back here over the ankle. Two more. And one. And let's turn it back to the front. Do that lower back again. Drop it down. Two. Up, two, down. Now this is just your lower back you're moving. Okay, you don't want to have everybody going up and down like this. Just nice and easy. Now let's make it in four. Drop it down. Two, three, four. Now up, two, three. Give me two more of those. Four, three, two. Now up for four, three, two. Roll those shoulders back. Two, three, and a nice deep breath in. Bring it up. And give me one more of those. Bring it up. And we're going to start the workout with our lower body first. And I'll be right back to do that. section first. I'm going to do this in two parts. This is a 12 pound body bar. If you have body bars in your club, I'm going to give you a few recommendations on how and where to hold the body bar when you're performing these exercises. Now if you have beginners, this is a 12 pound body bar. This might be a little too heavy for them. There are 8 pound body bars. I would recommend that you have them hold the body bar in front for support. In case if any time they get tired, they can turn the bar right in front and just brace themselves like this. Okay, if you have more advanced participants, they can hold it there also if they're comfortable, because once again, that gives a little bit of lower back support. Your advanced participants may want to put the body bar over their shoulder. Okay, you want to make sure you let them know to pull those abdominals in really tight and to not lean forward like this. Or if there's one other way you can hold the body bar, depending on which leg you're working. Works out nicely if you just hold it on one shoulder also. That way you can use your other hand for some lower back support. Okay, you don't always have to support the lower back when doing squats because squats do work the lower back muscles. But it's a good idea to have your beginner participants, you know, be aware of all these ways that they can hold the body bar and what might work best for them. Now, if you don't have body bars in your club, you can use dumbbells. Now, I have four pound dumbbells here, and once again, you can hold those dumbbells on your waist or you can hold them on your shoulders, okay? Now, four pounds isn't very heavy to be doing leg work, okay? Um, I prefer you have people with just starting out using like right around four or five pounds, and then they can advance on up. These are 10 pound dumbbells here, which for your legs isn't really a lot. That's not really heavy. Um, pound for pound, women's legs are just about equal in strength to men's. So for this first section, because of that fact, we're going to be doing a lot of muscular endurance, and this is the only section that will be muscular endurance, and the rest we're going to turn to strengthening. Um, the recommended repetitions are about 10 repetitions for each exercise, um, number 10 being the last one you can do. Now obviously, with this being muscular endurance, we're going to do more than 10 repetitions because we're going to keep going. We're going to do about eight of each thing, but we're going to keep going. So that actually turns out to be more than 10 repetitions. But once we get into doing some walking lunges and some partner squats, you know, the repetitions are going to go down because the muscles are already going to be tired. 
I find this the most effective way to work the legs in a body sculpting class because you just don't have heavy enough weight in there to effectively do 10 repetitions, number 10 being the last one you can do. So you have to do a lot of repetitions here. Okay, so I showed you how to hold the body bar and where you can hold your dumbbells. For this particular section, I'm not going to use any weight at all. But you have real beginners in your class, you might not have them using any weight. Um, another thing that you want to keep in mind, if you have someone using some weight and they're doing some exercises over here, and then they drop the weight halfway through. Once we get onto the other side to do those same exercises, you're going to want to have them pick that weight up again and basically drop it at the same point so they can lopsided and work one muscle more than the other side. Okay, so we'll get started in just a second. Okay, this is our first section today. We're going to be working the muscles of the lower body. I'm going to do this in two sections. Okay, the first section, I'm going to show you how you can use a body bar if you have body bars in your club. I'm also going to show you how to use the dumbbells. Okay, for the body bar, if you have beginners, you may want to have them hold the body bar in front like this. So if they're up on the step and they get fatigued partway through, they can take the body bar and just put it right down in front and use it for support. This is a 12-pound body bar. They do come in 8 pounds, which might work a little better for your beginners. If you have real beginners, you're going to want them to start this section without any weight at all because it's a lot of muscular endurance and they're going to really feel a burn in their legs. Okay? The dumbbells, you can hold at your waist. Stop this thing. I forgot something. Hi, our first section today is going to be the lower body. I have a body bar here, this is a 12 pound body bar. They also come in 8 pounds, 15 and 18 and so on up. Um, this is the average body bar that the most participants use. Shut the thing off. <laughs> I liked it better what I said before and I don't remember what I said before. <sighs> I'm going to put this here. Sorry everybody. <laughs> I'm doing so good. Yep. Our first section will be the lower body. Hey, I have here a body bar, and I'm going to show you a couple different ways that your participants can hold the body bar. If you have beginners in class, for this particular section, I would recommend them not using anything at all. But the body bar for beginners, I recommend you have them hold it in front, like this, as opposed to up over the shoulders. If they get fatigued, they can turn the bar and use it for support in front. Or if you have beginners also, they can start with the body bar in front like this. Okay, for your more advanced participants, they can put it up across the back of the trapezius. Now, you don't want to put it on your neck, on the neck bones, you want to hold it across your shoulders. Okay, now you want to be real careful when you do the squat section like this and watch your participants closely that they don't lean over like this. You want to sit right down into it. Squats do work your lower back, so it is a good idea to eventually have them not support the lower back all the time because it's more functional training. Another way you can hold the body bar is across one shoulder, preferably the leg that you've got up here, and then make sure you switch to the other shoulder on the other side. For dumbbells, if you don't have a body bar, we have four pound dumbbells here and 10 pound dumbbells. You can hold your dumbbells, if you're a beginner, right here. Now remember, with a 12 pound body bar, that's like holding six pound dumbbells, so that's really not that heavy for leg work. Okay, they can either hold the dumbbells here, once again, that gives you lower back support, or for your more advanced participants, they can hold it up on the shoulders, okay? 10 pounds is a pretty good weight for your average participant that's been coming for a while. Okay, these are 10 pound dumbbells. You definitely want to encourage your participants to, you know, up their weight pretty consistently um, as they become stronger and better able to do the exercises. Another thing, if your participants are on one side and working one leg and they drop the weights or the body bar halfway through, you definitely want to have them pick the weights up again and work up until that point that they drop the weights. So that way they're not like working the muscle groups lopsidedly, shall we say. So if they do, you know, eight reps with weights and then drop them, you want to make sure they do the same thing on the other side. 
Okay, but encouraging participants to work at their own fitness level and to up their weights when they feel comfortable. And this will be muscular endurance, this section, because we don't have heavy enough weights to do just 10 repetitions of each thing and 10 being the last one that you could possibly do. As we work the legs a little bit more, we're going to work into some harder exercises where your participants probably will only be able to do about 10 or 12 repetitions and that will be more towards strength training. And that will be after this section right here. Okay, so we'll get started in just one moment. Okay, let's get started. Once again, this is for your lower body. We're going to start over here on the right side of your bench with your right foot up. Okay, now when you're doing these squats, you want to watch for your participants because this is something they're going to tend to do. They're going to push forward as opposed to pushing back. You want to try and get those knees right in line with the ankles the whole time. So basically, your knees don't even move. When you sit right back down into this, the knees are still right over the ankles. Okay, but you will see them doing this. So walk around your class and check their form and make sure they're aware of it. They need to know the proper form, not just you telling them all the time. They need to be aware of it. Okay, once again, this is for muscular endurance, this section. I'm not going to use any weights at all. So that way it'll be easier for me to talk through this. And you can use weights at home if you like or add what's best for you, okay? We're gonna go down to, up to, nice and slow. Take it down, down, up, and up. Pull the tummy in, down, down, up, and up. Down, down, up, and up again. Down, down, up, and up. We're gonna do this four more times. Make sure those knees are right in line with the ankles. Down, down, up and up, two more, down, down, up, one more time, down, down, up, and up. Okay, we're going to turn away from your bench now. Now I'm going to back up a little bit so you can see me a little better. Now this is one section where you want to make sure your participants are very, very aware of their form. This knee has got to be in line with the ankle. Okay, so you need to have, get them in a spot so they can see themselves in the mirror. Okay, this is a one-legged squat or a leg dip. Okay, you're just going to go slowly down and up. Now normally you'd be away from the bench a little bit more, so I'm going to move out now, slowly down and up, keeping that knee right over the ankle. Back is straight, the back knee bends underneath the hip. I'm going to face this way because this is one of those exercises and we have a few more that are very difficult to look side to side, so it's best you have your participants looking straight ahead. Okay, two more, nice and slow, and up, one more time and up. Okay, let's go back to the front. This time you're going to be up on your toe. We're going to slowly sit and as you come up, squeeze the gluteus. Okay, drop it down and up, down and up. Now they're going to feel this a little bit more on the inner thigh. And also the more platforms you have on your step, the harder the workout's going to be. I really wouldn't recommend going over three platforms and your beginners can do this on the floor or they can just use the bench itself. Four more, up, down, up, down, and up. One more time, and up. Now we're gonna turn in and face the bench. Now you're gonna be in a lunge position here. Once again, it's very important to keep that knee right in line with the ankle. Your back knee is gonna bend under the hip. I'm gonna face this direction so I don't fall down in front of you. Okay, you're gonna go down to, up to, and here we go. Down, down, up, and up. Now this is a spot where they can hold the dumbbells on their leg if they like right here, if that's more comfortable. Sometimes it's more comfortable to take the body bar down and hold right at your side here also. It's down, down, up, and up. Three more. Down, down, up, two more. Down, down, up. One more time. Down, down, up, and up. Now we're going to take this leg off. Okay, so you're going to be stepping up on your bench with your left leg this time. We're going to step right up and do some lunges. We're going to give this leg a little bit of a rest and go to the next leg. Okay, you're just going to step up and back. Alternating legs and back. And I hope I don't step off the deck. Four more times. Once again, that knee is right in line with the ankle. You're pushing down in with the heel, pushing off with the heel. Now I want you to do eight on your left leg, all on the left leg. 
switch. Switch those feet. The little ball change helps because it loosens up the leg and gives you something to do while you're doing these. Four more. Three. Two. And one. Now I want you to bring that left foot back up onto the bench. Now this is a difficult exercise. You're probably going to see a lot of your participants drop the weight right here. We're going to step up. From a lunge position back here, you're going to step up onto the bench. Now this is one of those exercises where it's very difficult to look side to side. So you need to have them get their form down and be able to look a little bit before you have them go right ahead and do this so they can feel what the right form is. Okay, you're going to drop down, step up, drop back, step up, drop back, step up, drop back, step up, four more. And three, two, and one. Now once again, you need to keep that knee right in line with the ankle when you're stepping back. Okay, now I'm going to step back here with my outside leg. You're going to keep your other leg right up here on the bench. This is another exercise I just adore that will be screaming. We're going to stomp in place, then we're going to stomp up to the other end of the bench, stomp in place and come back and take it from there. They're really going to feel a burn in their quads here. This is great for skiing since winter's coming up. Never know it today though. Okay, we're going to stomp it out right here. Stomp, stomp. You want them to stay nice and close to the bench. Move up, two, three, stay here. Four, three, two. Now let's back it up. Four, three, two, stay here. Four, three, two. Now let's move it up again. Four, three, two, stay here, four, three, two, let's back it up, four, three, two, now we're going to slow this down, we're going to stomp and touch, lift up, touch, lift up, touch, touch, now let's do a hip extension, squeeze the glutes, squeeze, they really, really feel this little section here, especially after doing the other work, four more times, three, Two, one, now we're going to stomp it back there, right where we came from. Take it, four, three, two, let's move it on up. Four, three, two, now give me four around the bend. Four, three, two, and one. All right, now we're all set to do the other side. Now this leg, they're really going to be feeling it. They're going to be whining and screaming and moaning, just wait. Okay, so you may want to shake this leg out a little bit before you start. Okay, we're going to do the same thing that we did over there. I'm just going to go straight through it, so that way I've already did all the explaining. Okay, tummy in, knee right over the ankles. Down two, up two, here we go. It's down, down, up, and up. Down, down, up, and up. I very, very seldom use any exercise to tempo with the music. You always want to do it like in twos, like down two, up two because that forces them to go nice and slow and controlled and then they don't flip anything around, they don't lock any joints out, which is another thing, three more times, you want to make sure they don't lock the knees out on these exercises, you always want to keep a slight bend in the knee, one more time, up and up, okay, turn away from your bench, once again, knee in line with the ankle, this is a very difficult exercise, you'll see when you do it in class, drop it down and up, down, and up, down, and up, and up, four more, three, two, and one. Now, back to the front, you're going to be up on your toe this time, straight down, up and squeeze the butt. Here we go, down, squeeze, down, squeeze, 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 four more. Three, two, and one. Now turn in, down two, up two. Knee in line with the ankle, tummy in. Back knee bends under the hip. Down two, down, down, up, and up. Down, down, up, and up. I have a beautiful view of the ocean right here. My ship's coming in. Four more, take it down, down. I gotta go pretty soon, there it is. Down, down, up, two more. Down, 
down, up, and up. One more, down, down, up, and up. Okay, take that leg off. Now you're gonna come up with your right leg and do the lunges, okay? Ready, here we go. Step up, pressing in through the heel, pressing off of the heel. And maybe if you all buy my video, I can afford a house right here on the ocean. That would be great, and I'd invite you all over too. How about two more? Okay, give me eight, all on the right leg. Nice and slow. Now you want to encourage your participants too to go at their own pace. You don't have to keep up with the music. This isn't a dance class. You want to make sure they're using proper form and doing what's comfortable for them. One more time. Okay, bring that leg back up. Now we're gonna do the uh, step ups. Step up, drop back, step up, drop back, step up, step up. Give me four more. Three, two, and last time. Okay, take your outside leg down. We're gonna do the infamous stomp. They're whining right now. Okay, four, three, two, let's stomp it out. Four, three, two, let's move it on up. Four, three, two, stay right here. Four, three, two, back it up. Stay here. Four, three, two, move it up again. Four, three, two, stay right here. Four, three, two, let's back it up for four, then we're gonna do it half time. Slow it down right here. Stomp and touch, lift and touch. This gives them a little bit of a break too. Okay, we're gonna do that hip extension. Now you don't wanna see them arching their back when they do this, okay? You just wanna extend the hip a little bit and laterally rotate your toe out a little bit. That isolates the gluteus maximus, muscle you can't miss usually. Three more, two, and one. Let's stomp it out. Four, three, two, let's move it on up. They're really screaming at you right now. Let's take it around. Four, three, two, stay right here. Okay, bring that leg down off. Stay close to your bench. We're just gonna sit. Sit and up. Sit and up. Sit, up, sit. Now open the legs, toes straight ahead. Same thing, have a seat. Four, and three, and two, and one, now turn the toes out in a plie position. And don't fall off your deck if that's where you are too. Take it down and up, down and up, down and up, down, toes in, sit and up, sit, up, sit, up, sit, step it in, sit and up. Three more, they're really mad at you right now. But we're not done yet. Oh, one more time. Okay, let's bring the leg up. You're gonna do the same stomping thing, only you're going to abduct this time, okay? So you're gonna stomp, abduct, lift, abduct, abduct. Now if you have ankle weights and you don't wanna do this all in a row, you could put an ankle weight on right now. For if you have beginners or participants not holding a, a large weight, they can also hold the weight on the outside leg. Okay, let's step it right up on top of the bench. Okay, you're gonna be in a plie position here. Toes out, we're going down four, up two. Four, three, two, one, bring it up and up. Don't lock those knees. Two, three, four, bring it up and up. Two more, down, two, three, four, up. One more time, down, two, three, four, up and up. Now bring this right leg off your bench. Okay, now your legs are straight across from each other down four, up two. Take it down, two, three, four, up and up. And down, two, three, four, up and up. Make sure they're not bouncing down like this. You wanna make the muscle hold your weight and up and up. Take it down, two, three, four, up and up. One more, down, two, three. Now stay here, press it down, 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 and down. Give me eight, seven, six, five, four, 
three, two, up two, take it up and up. Okay, now face your bench. You're gonna do the same thing, only you're on the floor this time. Okay, we're gonna go down four, up two. Ready, here we go. Take it down, two, three, four, up and up. Down, two, three, four, up and up. Two more, sit, two, three, four. You just wanna go parallel right here. You don't wanna dip below the knees on any of the squats. Down, down, up. Give me one more time. Down, down, down. Stay here, press it. Give me eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Bring it up, two. Okay, take your right foot back on the bench. Now you're on the other side. We're gonna make our way back over. Okay, down four, up two. Four, three, two, one. Bring it up. And up again, down, two, three, four, up and up. Down, two, three, four, up and up. One more, down, two, three, four, up. I lied, half a one. Two, three, stay here. Press it, four, three, two, one. Eight more, one, really and truly, only eight more. How about four more? Three, two, one. Up and up. All right, step it right back on your bench, and we're going to make our way back over there. How do you feel? I'm tired, and I have a long time to go here. Okay, press it. Four, three, two, one. Bring it up and up. Four, three, two, one. Up and up. Two more. Down, two, three, four, up. One more time. Down, two, three, four, up. And up. Okay, step over to the side. We're gonna do a little stomp and abduct. Same way we came from. Okay, ready? Here we go. It's stomp, abduct. Now you always want them to get, get them to squeeze their butt too. Okay, we're going out to the side here, but they can still squeeze those buns a little bit. Somebody's gotta squeeze your buns, right? Four more. Three, two, and one. Step down off, have a seat. Four. And three, two, one. Open up, toes straight. Have a seat. Four, three, two, and one. Take those toes up, plie, down. Two more, sit, sit, now turn them in. Sit, up, sit, and up, sit. Last four, they'll be so happy. Until you go on to this next part, I'm gonna show you. And then the next part. And one. All right, this concludes the muscular endurance section. Um, we're gonna do some partner squats and some walking lunges. Then I also have a whole section for the inner outer thighs, using Dyna bands and challenge tubing. And I have to go get my friend Emily right now, and I'll be right back. Okay, we're gonna do some more lower body right now. I have a body bar here and also some dumbbells. Um, once again, you can still hold these things the same way, but because we're doing lunges and because this is probably the most difficult lower body exercise, it requires a lot of coordination and balance. You may not want to have your participants put the body bar across their shoulders like this. Plus, if you're going to do lunges the way I do them, they won't be able to. I do them the length of the, uh, the gym that you're working in. So what I have them do is I have them hold the body bar on their shoulder. Also, once again, it's going to be easier for them to take that bar down if they need that support than having it back behind their shoulders. So you can either hold it right here, or once again, beginners can hold it down here. Or because this is only 12 pounds, you may encourage your participants, if you don't have dumbbells, to use two body bars. A lot of people at the club where I do a, a lower body workout, use, they use two body bars. Okay, these are dumbbells. Basically with dumbbells, you just want to hold them down at your side. And that also gives you a little bit more stability when you've got something down at your side like this. Okay? Now, what you want to do with these, because I have limited space, I'm just going to explain a few ways you can do a lunge. Okay, obviously you can do them in place. And what you want to do is you want to make sure, once again, always and forever for the rest of your life, have that knee right in line with the ankle. The back knee is going to bend just about under the hip. You're going to have your abdominals in nice and tight. And make sure your participants aren't leaning over like this. Beginners are going to tend to do that because these are difficult. You want to make sure they're going straight down 
and stepping back. You want to step, drop, lift, and in. So if you're in a beginner class doing that, you might want to break that down into half time, where you step, drop, up, and back. Now you can do these in place, okay, stepping forward and back. As you know, we did some of these up on the bench in the last section, so you can do them up on the bench. Once again, the more platforms you have underneath, the harder they're going to be, okay? The best way I find to use these lunges is to do them walking across the room, the length of the room, or my friend Emily walks the length around the gym, which is, you know, adds some great variety too, especially since we teach in the same club. I do them straight, she goes around in circles. Should be the other way around, but that's okay. So, you want to step forward, step in, as opposed to stepping back. You're going to step forward, drop, come in, change legs, and step forward again as you walk the length of the gym. I'll show you that one more time, starting over here. You'll step, come in, step, and come in. Now once again, you can do that around the gym. You can do it the length of the gym. I have everybody line up like the Rockettes and we do our lunges. Another way that you can do this is do everything on the right leg, which is more advanced. Okay, if you go down the length of the gym or the parameter of the gym, everything on your right leg, that's going to be more advanced. And then, of course, you want to have them do it again on the left leg. I usually have them count how many times they do it on the right, so then again, they can do it on the left leg. So you can do them in place. You can do them up on a step. You can do them the length of the gym. You can do them around the gym. You can do them half time as you're walking, where you would step, drop, lift, and come in. That, they really, really feel that because it forces them to use their muscles to pick them right back up. When they're already fatigued, you know, you really, really feel these. Or you can do, you know, as I said, one leg, the other leg, do it half time like that. Now this is an exercise that you're going to want to switch around. If you have beginners, you're going to want to do it first because it's the most difficult and you don't want to really wear them out that much doing the other section that I showed you. Um, if you have more advanced participants, you're going to want to wear those legs out a little bit more so they feel the lunges more. Okay, so and if you have a, you know, a mixed bag of people, you can mix and match and make sure people are aware that they need to go at their own pace. So you can do a lunging section. You might want to do the endurance section and then lunge again. Okay, and then I have one other section, um, some partner squats that my friend Emily's going to help me out with. And then we're, we're going to do the inner outer thighs and your glorious maximus here. And then we're going to do some hamstring work, although you are doing your hamstrings and your legs all over um, throughout the rest of this. Okay, so I'll be right back with my friend. lower body thing aside from the inner outer thighs. I want you to meet my friend Emily. This is her beautiful home we're at here today. I'm trying to get let her, you know, live with her, live with her and everything, but she's allergic to my cat. So, all right, now when you do partner squats here, I would suggest you do these towards the end because when they're already tired, they have someone for support. You don't need to do this at the beginning because they're not that tired yet. You want to really wear them out first and then do these last. Okay. If you have body bars at your club, you're going to want to have them hold the body bar on their shoulder so they'll be facing each other so that the other bar will be on the other shoulder, okay? If you're using dumbbells, what I have people do, these are 10-pound dumbbells, is they can double the weight up and put it on your shoulder. Once again, this is only 20 pounds. That's not a lot of weight for the lower body, okay? We're going to do it without anything today, just for an example. Now, I have everybody in class raise their left hand because for some reason when I say left foot, everybody gets confused. So I have them raise their left hand and you line up your left toes. Nice to meet you. <laughs> you have them line up their left toes and you want to get about two feet apart. Then you're going to step your legs out to the side. They'll be stepping over like this and over like this. You're going to have to go around the room and check their form. Make sure the legs are straight across from each other. You're going to grab your partner's forearm. Now keep in mind we would have a body bar or dumbbells on our shoulders here. And you're just going to sit back, keeping the knees right in line with the ankles, and don't let the butt dip below the knees, and come back up. Okay, let's do that one more time. Slowly down and slowly up. Now what you need to do is you're pulling away from your partner. Okay, so she's pulling on you, and I'm pulling on her. That way you don't fall over. Because it's real difficult to have the legs only this far apart and really sit back into a squat and keep those knees 
right in line with the ankles. That's why the squats we do are usually a little wider stance because it's easier for balance. So we'll show you that one more time. We're gonna go down two and up two right here. Drop it down, two, up, two. Now you wanna make sure they don't lock the knees. They'll do that, you gotta watch them every single minute. Up and up, you always wanna keep that tummy in. Okay? This bee loves me, man. Please, I don't wanna play. <laughs> only on video, only in the movies. He's gonna bite me. <laughs> We're gonna keep this part just for entertainment, okay? Anyway, there's many different variations of this squat you can do, the partner squat. We can go down four, up two. We're not gonna do too many more because that guy's mad at me and he's gonna be back. I'm gonna change my clothes and he won't recognize me. Okay, we're gonna go down four, up two. Here we go. Take it down, two, three, four, up, two. Again, down, two, three, four, up. One more time, down, two, three, four, up. Now just slowly down and up. Sit and up. Couple more. Sit and up. One more time. Sit. And up. Now, of course, because I had the weight on this shoulder, you need to make sure that you do the same thing on the other side, okay? We'll just do a couple more for you, and then I'm going to change and get away from that guy that's following me around, okay? Let's just go straight down and up this time. Here we go. Just sit and up. He's after you now. Sit and up. It's nice being outside, huh? Great idea. One more time, and we're out of here. Sit and up, because he's back again. So you can do many variations of that particular exercise, but I would recommend you do it last, um, because they do have the support at that time when they're tired. And also, you know, you get to know your partner, and everybody laughs, and you'll have a good time. And exercise should be a good time also, to keep your students coming back for more. Okay, and I'll be right back with inner outer thighs. Thank you, Emily.